AI generated video is cool and all, but you know what is even cooler? Actually being able to control it. Pika just dropped two new things amongst many other things that we've seen on social media. One is obviously Pika 2.2, but today what we're gonna talk about is Pika Frames. We need to talk about the pricing and how it actually works out. So Pika Frames, and if you want to use Pika specifically and all the different things that comes up with it, you have to use the $10 plan. With the free one, you can get Pika 1.5, you don't get Pika 2.2. And if you want to get 2.2 and beyond, you need to use the $10 plan. And you can also see all the different credits, how much is used for that. So you can see a total of eight credits is used in Pika Frames and the image to image and the Pika scenes. So you definitely need a price plan in order to use Pika Frames. Pika Frames is basically making random chaos feel like professional for Holy shit! completely professional as you can see in these demos right here now what it means is and i'm gonna actually first we sign in so we click on the sign in and i'm gonna sign in what it actually means is you're powering keyframes with ai so you can see right over here in this template uh, see it has the gun battle transition so you can see if we click on use template it shows us the first frame and the last frame that's exactly what we need to know Nothing else. So you need the first frame and the last frame, and then you have your prompt. And that is what would make it the next level of AI videos. We know we've had different kinds of AI videos, and I have made multiple videos on different platforms. You can see the links over here that I have done for me and other stuff. This one has a bunch of different things. First off, Pika 2.2, as you can see over here, has up to 10 seconds. So you can get up to 10 seconds. And you can also get the different aspect ratios. So you get cinematic, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, portrait, Instagram story. So you get the idea. Now, the AI motion does not feel like an AI motion, as you can see in this template right over here. And you also saw from my intro, that specific title frame was also made with Pika frames. And I'm going to show you how that is actually made. You can already see in this template here. So in the beginning, you put the prompt for the transition so the camera movement i'm going to have a link in the description you can actually read through i found a very nice article where you could find different camera movements it would be nice to know what are those movements you can have a tracking shot a dolly shot basically think cinematic shots and here you have smooth frame transition shooting bullet out of a barrel of the gun hyper realistic cinematic epic not exactly a sentence, but that is the result that gives us this one. Or for example, let's say this image over here. Now, these are not images that I have done. We're going to be playing with a little bit of the use case scenario in a little bit, but I'm just showing you what Pika Frames is all about. The biggest thing is you're able to also produce 1080p resolution. So if we go over here and if you click, you can see we have 720 and you have 1080p. And then you click on apply. So you basically get 1080p resolution and... You can see the transitions are very smooth, very smooth. And you can see woman turns around and transforms into woman with a new outfit. And uh, it goes with uh, this one, for example, with pan. So this has been something that I've also been noticing specifically with the AI space is that whip pans have been quite a bit of a hit. So we can actually use this. I'm going to put it in one of my case scenarios once we're going to get into that. And then you can also use, say, for an example, if you want to do kind of a progression. So from egg to the bird, you can see how it has moved. And clearly they've done these in a five seconds. So the longer you add your time, given that we can do up to 10 seconds, the more you can add details or the more the AI will be able to have details. You can see all of them. You know that you're using Pika frames. If you see this option over here, that means you're using Pika frames. Now here as well, this is another one for anybody who's thinking of doing like a fashion wardrobe change. This would be something interesting. So here you could see like this woman, she is switching into this Halloween costume. If you wanted to only look at the Pika frames, then you go over here and click on Pika frames. So Pika frames is basically what literally is a non-complicated way of keyframing what you would normally do in video editing. Except there is no manual editing, it's clicking and it is literally using two images as we have just seen with our examples right over here given to us by Pika. You have the first frame and the last frame and the cat is transformed into a dog. So you see how that transition happens. 
and you need to also make sure that you have two videos uploaded and you need to set your durations again as i mentioned you can you can you can also nuance it up to from as less as one second all the way up to 10 seconds and now i'm going to actually show you some of the use case scenarios you've already seen one which is the intro of today's video i actually for the first time added an intro which was made using the Pika frames. I'm also going to show you that. So just stick around for that to see how I made that also for my video channel. And you can also make that for you if you ever wanted to make something for a creative ad spec. So that is something to keep in mind. But here are some use case scenarios which I found very interesting, which you could also implement. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We saw the templates. Now we are going to be jumping into what we are going to talk about is some of the creative use case scenarios. So frames is literally what you're doing one frame at a time so now we're going to let's say start with the intro so you saw the intro just now which was my logo and it's a swirl so if we look at it so the reason the way you can look at your existing image is you go to reprompt the minute you do that you can see that i have my first frame and last frame so that's basically the idea that you have across the board so you have your first frame which is in this case i have this image over here now I created this image using ideogram. So if you want, mind you, you can also do it using something like a Google image. So if you go to image in Google, and if you search over here under Google images lab, you're going to be able to find image effects. You can also get something from here for yourself. So maybe you want to look for something from gradients or you get the idea. So here, what can happen is you can actually get for yourself something that is really nice like you see here in my case we have the swirl that comes into the logo pop so you see what i did here is smooth overlap transition to the word mark you can sometimes mention it but it's a good thing to have the transition part in the beginning so that's the first one now you can see here what i've done you can see that she transitions into an older child so again, you just use smooth, seamless transition. But if you say, for an example, wanted it to be more consistent, you could also do that. For the purposes of this one, I actually used Mid Journey. So if you go over here and then I just go down right over here, you could see I used Mid Journey. So you can actually use character reference. I am going to make a video on that. So uh, feel free to check it on my channel because I'm going to be making a video about that. I've made a couple of videos about Mid Journey previously. But you could do that here. So you could do some character reference to get some consistency. But you can see what I've done here. So I basically created two steps. Now, if I do a reprompting here, you can see what's happening is that I have the first image of the child and then I have the second image of the woman. And again, if you, if you go here, you can see this is my prompt. Again, please feel free to take this prompt. I'm going to have all the prompts down in the description below for you to choose for. Again, you can also use the same exact prompt in Imogen effects, but do make sure that this is 100% free, but they are also a little bit more restrictive. So you might need to be a little mindful of that. You can also say for an example, do it in a square format, and then you should be able to get something. Sometimes they do have an issue. So I'm just showing you that you can actually do it here as well, because mid journey is not exactly free. But you get an idea so this is the young one and then after a certain couple of tries then i got the big the woman other woman image which would be right over here so then i got this image see now that's the thing sometimes you don't get that so you could still use this prompt so let's say for example if you wanted to use this prompt you can still use it in the image effects so image effects is a free ai image generator by google all you need is just to sign in with your google so there's no charges whatsoever so you can use this if you don't have any other paid ai image generator tools with you so this is another place that you can look at so these are the two images that i did for the first set then for the second set as you can see right over here the image goes from young to old and then if you wanted to add some more spice to it what you could do is you could take so this is exactly what i did here i took the first frame and then the last frame and then for this one this specific image i took the last frame from here and then I made it the first frame. So you could see it exactly. So I made the last frame and then I put in the first frame. And then, then I get this result. Clearly you can see that it is transitioning into an older person. So if you go to Imogen, you can already see that it creates based on this prompt. So feel free to use this prompt if you want. And you can also use image effects. 
but you have to just be a little bit wary that when you're talking about child or teen they probably may not be able to generate that so you might have to use some other tools for that i have also used ideogram for mine so some of them were in ideogram but i'm going to still nevertheless give you the prompts for the images that i've generated now for this one right over here if you wanted to let's say do a product swap or let's say if you wanted to change the outfit, this is a very good example. So let's say this pant, we changed it into a white pant. You see, it just seamlessly changed. We did smooth, seamless transition. However, to get this exact method of consistency, the thing that you would require, and what I have done specifically, because I have made journey, is that I took the initial image which was this image over here and then you would do something known as an in painting so you go over here and then you basically are creating an edit through it so say for an example if i were to go to the editor and then if i click on specific parts then i essentially mention that i just want this part to be xyz and that is when you see the genes changing and then you can also say if you want it to be avant-garde. So that is how you change it if you want to have a specific thing. So you do the in-painting and then you change it. Again, if you go to editor over here, you do the change over here and then you can... I'm going to do a further deep dive on the mid-journeys feature. I have a video coming up so you can check it out whenever that comes out. I'm going to actually put a link over here when the video is out so you should be able to check it out. But that is basically how you can get a consistency of the same exact character while essentially changing that outfit. This is really helpful here. But in the Picas part of it, Pika side of things, all you have to do is put smooth, seamless transition. And then you see how it changes from my blue jeans to my white jeans. Then for this one, we can see I've done the whip transition, but I thought of to add it in a little different way. Now, you can obviously finesse it a little bit more, but the idea behind this is like you're using a selfie camera, but you're just like whipping it around. So you're whipping it around and it's changing to two separate people. You can obviously finesse it in like another editing tool if you wanted to, but this is right from the get-go if you're not doing any edits. You can use it like Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere to do your final edits. But this is right from the camera. And you can see the prompt here is a little bit longer because it says whip pan the camera from the first woman holding the phone like a selfie to the second. So you can see I have the two images. Again, these two images, I've done it through ideogram. I'm going to have, again, the prompts for these in the description below. You can do it in any other tool or software that you feel. I would honestly recommend you checking out image effects, again, because it is free but you can do it in any other image generation, a platform that you feel is works best for you. I'm gonna show you the next kind of transition that we are gonna talk about. These are all use case scenarios which you can think of. I would say there are a plethora of ways that you can actually explore. And like I've said in the beginning of this video, I'm gonna have also a link down in the description for the list of camera movements that you can have. You can see right over here, you can have a bunch of camera movements. This is a fantastic resource. And I'm going to have the link to this in the description below. So handheld movements. How would you say a handheld shot of a hiker? So these, having it in the beginning for the peak of frames would really accentuate your transition and would help it. So if you wanted to really push it. Now going back to our initial idea. Now if you want to, now say for an example, if you wanted to do a zoom in on a macro shot, so if you're doing an e-commerce, what you do for this one is very simply, you have the first image. So in this case, it was the image of the jeans. And then quite literally, just take a screenshot of the zoom that you want to get. So for this specific one, we wanted a zoom on the details of the band. So that's all I did. And I just said smooth, seamless transition, zoom camera into the details of the jeans. You don't need to mention all of this, but sometimes it's a good thing to mention it. So by doing that, what happens is you're getting a zoom in and it gives you the details. So it's just another way. So it's literally playing from frame to frame. And I feel this is a really powerful tool to have. It's, it's, it's nothing that we have to think too much about. If you don't even want to use other tools, you can literally just whip out a couple of ideas and you can post it wherever you feel. This is in a little more dynamic setting. I said smooth, seamless transition, zoom camera out to an apple seed turning into an apple tree, but I did it again in two formats. So I had a first frame to a second frame. 
and let's go and see what I mean. So I have a first frame, which is the apple seed, second frame, which is the branch. And again, I'm going to go to ideogram and I'm going to show you what I actually made for this. Again, ideogram is not exactly free particularly. So I actually took this one over here and I'm going to put this prompt in the description below. So I took this specific one and then it essentially has turned kind of, it pushes out and it shows us this tree. Now, if you want to get even more creative from here, you could do this and then zoom out further and you could show the whole tree. Just a food for thought. So you could basically edit both of those things out together and you can show it. And this is the other frame of it. So now the frame that we have in the last one, which was the last frame, now becomes our first frame. And then this is the result from there. So we start from there and then we push out and then we see the tree. So that's another way that you could see the progression. So you can go from like small, and these are like what you would call dynamic camera movements, which is why, again, I'm going to reiterate, it would be nice and handy to have this kind of a cheat sheet around you. You can also find it on Google anywhere easily, these kind of cheat sheets, but I'm going to give you specifically a link to this specific cheat sheet. It has all the important camera angles that you might need to know, especially if you want to get some really nice, interesting shots. Speaking of which, if you wanted to create like a 3D commercial style, let's say for like an Airbnb style, I've seen Airbnb do similar thing in their thing and you wanted to do something but in a much, much, much quicker format, this would be something easier and interesting to do. What I have done for this one is I essentially made my first frame as an empty room and then on that same specific one, I asked you to create another room. So you see, these two are exactly the same. And it's basically, it could be any of the rooms. So you have two rooms, essentially. And then what is happening here is exactly, it's just morphing and adding it into it. So here it's a like smooth, seamless transition on same stationary shot. If you don't want the shot to move, you can also mention that it should be a stationary shot. So then it doesn't have any finicky movements. So that's also another interesting use case scenario. If you want to make an isometric 3D kind of an composition, this is something that you can consider. Again, there are a plethora of different ways that you could use this, but this is another way that you can use it. Another way that I was thinking, which is a little more of a fun and a creative kind of a way, is literally if you did it kind of in a way where you're morphing a person into an animal or something else. In this case, I morphed him into a lion. Again, the logic is quite simple. You take the first image, again, image from wherever you want. I, for this tree, for this purpose, I took the image from mid-journey. I'm again going to put the prompt down in the description. And then we had also another prompt. You can also put images. So if you just want an image, like say for an example over here, what they had done in this template, this was an image. So if you just want to do an image, you can also do an image. So that's completely up to you. For this one, however, I did an AI image with an AI image. And the result is a transition into a morph of a lion. So if you want to make something like that, you can go ahead and do that for sure. I would always recommend that you add a little bit more to your prompt. And it's a good idea to also follow the prompt practices that they have over here, which you can see has commas. Sometimes they're also using sentences, but definitely using your transition as the first part of the prompt would definitely help you creating your Pika frames. Today, we just covered Pika frames. It has a lot. And the potential of this is just endless, as you just saw with our templates and with some of the videos that I have produced over here. I feel like this is a game changer, in my opinion. Definitely has its use case scenario. With that being said, feel free to check out this video right over here, because YouTube thinks that is a good video that you might like to watch. Also, feel free to check out this video, because this was the last video that I had uploaded. And you might actually like this video. You can also check out this uh, playlist right over here. And with that all said, I'm going to see you in the next video. Until then, catch you next time.